What's good, Potterheads? Welcome back to the Half Blood YouTuber channel. It is time to be extraordinary. Now, right off the bat, uh, let me just explain what we'll be what we'll be doing um, in this character-based series. If we're all Potterheads who frequently watch YouTube, which isn't uh, really all that uncommon, uh, then you're familiar with the Movie Flame series, where he goes through the lives of the Harry Potter characters we know and love. Um, noting specific events they had in the Harry Potter series and overall lore. Well, this is just gonna be a wee bit different. My series isn't their life, it's their character. You do it then if you're so clever. Go on, go on. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. I think I will. Anyway, long-winded long introduction aside, which uh, now that I actually um, am reading it out is not really all that long-winded, um, I wanted to start off the series with uh, a rather unpopular Harry Potter opinion that the Dursleys aren't actually uh, necessarily deserving of the hatred that they get. Alright, now, right before we start, I actually wanted to, to ask a favor of you guys. If you wouldn't mind, um, just leaving a comment in the Patronus section down below of if you happen, if you, uh, like my, the intro that I got from Placeit, or more importantly, really, um, if you don't really like it at all. But I really hope that you guys like it. Anyways. The number one concept in the books you must emphasize when discussing the Dursleys is actually the first sentence of the entire series. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Essentially, the Dursleys want nothing to do with magic. Mostly because they're muggles, but also because they already have something to do with magic in in the first place. Uh, muggles don't like anything that doesn't fit into their everyday society, whether it's people in cloaks, cats reading maps, or a bunch of owls flying around during the day. They don't like it. Uh, Joe Rowling obviously thought it was very important to understand how muggles view witches and wizards, or else she would not have started off the series like this. If you have a different explanation for this for this decision, well, that's what the Patronus section is for. Wow, I just realized um, how much my braces actually affect my pronunciation of the letter H, which is eh, that's that's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, um, now it's time to focus on each member of the Dursley family, and I'm gonna start with Aunt Petunia, who I think has the only totally reasonable, uh, totally understandable reasoning out of the three. Petunia Evans and Lily Evans were sisters, Evans is their maiden name, and in Deathly Hollows, uh, Petunia expresses the sadness she carries from her sister's death to this day. You really can't help but assume that she feels that same pain every day, having to take care of the orphan boy she got stuck with as a direct result of that tragic night in Godric's Hollow. The next bit isn't so clear though. Year after year, Harry comes home from the Dursleys with all his school stuff. It's not too much of a stretch to say that Petunia actually feels jealous that Dumbledore let Harry go to Hogwarts and not her. Especially when you notice that as Aunt Petunia begins her uh, big monologue on in the Hut on the Rock, J.K. Rowling throws in this seemingly throwaway line. She stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. This next part is the most important. It seemed she had been wanting to say all this for years. Next up is Uncle Vernon, and for this part I want to look at what happened at the Dursleys' house each summer when Harry comes to visit. In year one, Harry brings all sorts of magic into Uncle Vernon's life, to the point he goes... <laughs> Uh, to put it in his own words, wonky. Donny's gone mad, hasn't he? I've recorded this three times already, and it gets me every single time. Oh my god. <laughs> in year two, uh, a house elf comes to stop Harry going to school and ends up ruining the biggest deal of Vernon's career. 
and your three more magic comes this time inflating Uncle Vernon's very own sister. In year four, the Weasleys come to visit, leaving behind a ton tongue toffee for Dudley, um, who also encountered a Dementor the next year, leaving uh, Vernon's son essentially a zombie. In year six, Dumbledore shows up to punish them for not doing something they were forced into, uh, because I assure you, if given a choice, Vernon wouldn't even let Harry on uh, Privet Drive. In year seven, they were forced to leave their home because Harry was in danger and therefore they were in danger. All right, so uh, at this point, um, I wrote in the script that I was supposed to uh, hurry up um, because apparently when you're writing a script, it seems like a lot more than when you actually read out the script because now I'm reading out the script and I feel like I'm just going super fast. So yeah. Actually, I think I had that same problem uh, with, what was it, the um, alternate prophecy theory, yeah, because I thought I was going to have to rush everything up because I was writing a lot, but then I recorded it and it came out to like five minutes. Guys, I'm sorry about this. I'm going to have to change my relativity of uh, what I'm actually writing. But anyways, finally, Dudley isn't entirely innocent by any means. Uh, but he is a product of socialization nonetheless. Um, if you don't want to read a 10-page article to understand my point, then all you need to know is a person's general actions and opinions are mostly influenced by the environment they grew up in, like a uh, nature and nurture type thing or something like that. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley uh, raised Dudley to think he was better than all the other children and that he could bully other kids because he was superior. So when Harry, whether directly or indirectly, brought magic to Privet Drive, Dudley thought he was getting punished for something that his parents taught him was okay. Not to mention that Dudley has experienced some magical trauma as well. The vanishing glass, remember that? How about his aunt blowing up like a bubble? How about that treat the twins left behind for him? Dudley didn't know any better. He has the largest sweet tooth I've ever seen, and anyone who knows me knows that's really saying something. How about the dementia attack? How about having to leave his childhood home without any explanation besides it wasn't safe? It may seem like I'm bringing up the same events multiple times, and that's because I am. Each Dursley experienced the same thing, yes, but they perceive those events differently um, because obviously they're each their own person. And that's the whole point of this series. I want to dissect as many characters in the Harry Potter series as possible. Discover what makes them tick and offer up perspectives you may never have heard before and might even change your opinions on certain characters. With those goals in mind, coming into this series, I thought the Dursleys would be a perfect series opener because I think this video really shows how I think and how I hope to inspire others to think, out of the box. I hope my viewers can use this type of thinking to improve their lives, make better choices, and most importantly, be extraordinary. <laughs> Look at me with all this talk about how smart I am. Like, I think I'm better than you. I can assure you, I do not. I'm 16, the optimal age for teenage stupidity, and I'm reading off a five-page script I've been working on for two weeks for my 13 subscribers. In no way am I better than anyone else watching this video. Well, I'm sick of my own voice now, so it's uh, time for me to shut up. If you like this video, uh, then hit the thumbs up to show support. Subscribe over to the left for more Harry Potter content. Uh, ring the bell for channel reminders. You know the drill. Stay extraordinary. Peace.